Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. So today's video is all about the blooms. Again, we have had a really good season here in my tent and I am going to share some really special blooms with you. I have a couple first time bloomers in my grow tent right now. One of them I've been waiting for for almost three years. The other one I've been waiting for for a little over a year and a half. So both of them um, long awaited to say the least. And I have some other blooms lingering around that um, are definitely worth a look and another one that has freshly opened that I don't think we've taken a look at yet. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but anyhow, lots and lots of blooms to look at today. We are only going to focus on stuff in the tent. I'm going to try to keep this video of a reasonable length, but I do like to get carried away sometimes, so you got to forgive me. <laughs> anyhow, um, let's get in here and take a look at our first new bloom, something we have seen before but something that I truly wait for every year and that is extremely special to me. So let's get in here and take a look. So I was watching Danny's Orchid Journey the other day. She had a video on how she uses Fison, and she just so happened to stop in on her lovely collection of these plants. It is absolutely Bellina season. So the first bloom that we will be looking at today is Phalaenopsis Bellina. She has finally opened, guys. This orchid is so special in so many ways. The fragrance in this grow tent right now is absolutely remarkable. The colors of this bloom are just absolutely remarkable as well. And I just can't be more excited. I've got another bud coming already. It's a sequential bloomer off the spike. You usually only get one, maybe two if you're lucky, at a time. And I do have really big news. My other little division of Falbalina here. It came in the pot with my bigger plants when I got it, but this one was more advanced. This one looked to be a bit behind, but it does have what I think to be, let me see in here, a spike starting down here at the very base. So we may be able to see multiple Bellina blooms in here yet this season. I did not think it was going to be possible. I thought it was going to be for sure another year with this guy, but um, I am not going to complain if I can have more than one of these at a time. First and foremost, the fragrance will double and the beauty of this bloom itself will also double. So looking forward to it and yes, Danny, it is absolutely Phalaenopsis Bellina season. So that is our first bloom. One more good look at it. And now I have something extraordinarily special to share with you guys. So on to the next. So the first new to me bloom that we have in store for you guys is this absolute gem. This is Orangus punctata. I got this plant a little while ago from Tarzane, about a year and a half or so, and I have been patiently, patiently, patiently awaiting this thing to start growing well, which it has finally and start blooming, which again, it has finally. This bloom from top to bottom is probably a solid six inches. Um, it's about two inches across, you know, two inches or so from top to bottom of the actual bloom itself. And I don't know if you have already picked up on this or not, or are familiar with this plant, but this plant is absolutely tiny. Very much um, Phalaenopsis-like in nature, the way it looks. Um, but yeah, this bloom, I mean, goodness. Very much like a ghost orchid. Um, ghost orchids are in the Angracoid family, as are Arangus. So it does make quite a bit of sense, but I tell you what right now, this has been long worth the wait. The camera is not doing this bloom any kind of justice right now. So I've taken some really good pictures of this and I think it does the coloration a little bit better. The lip here is just bright, bright white. 
but the petals and the sepals are an off-white color. It's kind of golden in a way, and it's just absolutely, unbelievably beautiful. So, the fragrance from this, um, it comes out when the sun's gone, um, later in the evening time. So it's one of those angracoids that has a nocturnal fragrance because its pollinator is some sort of a sphinx moth, I believe, or a moth, again, with a proboscis long enough to reach all the way down in that nectar spur and get the lovely contents for it whilst pollinating this lovely, lovely orchid. It's another um, Madagascar slash Reunion Island special, as are many other species of this genus, but it is absolutely one of my favorites that I have managed to bloom so far. Again, just the size of that bloom versus the size of the plant is absolutely spectacular to me. It does have some pretty neat foliage. It's got texture. It kind of reminds me of a Cuthbert Sonii, but not so warty. Um, similar in color and, um, you know, hue as well, at least. So, that is Orangus punctata. I have waited so long for this. And now on to another one that I have absolutely waited ages for. This is one I've had again for about a year and a half from Tarzane. And um, it's finally a really happy plant. So, on to the next one, and I hope you get as excited about it as I am right now. So, this plant. And I know what you're asking me right now is where in the heck are the blooms, Bobby? But I assure you, one of the most beautiful blooms that I've had yet in this entire greenhouse is stowed away or hidden, for lack of a better way of putting it, on this orchid. So let's have a chat about the plant first and then I will show you this incredible, incredible gift that I've been given. So this is Marmalica rufescens. If you guys have been following anything related to this plant, remember I have struggled quite a bit. I had for the first time, two buds on this thing. One that I knew about and one that was kind of mashed down in the moss and hidden. The first bud started to progress really nicely and I believe I ripped it off with the Nepenthes taking it in and out for the watering and for my video sessions because the Nepenthes usually hangs about right here and to get in here I absolutely have to remove it. So that's a big drawback of having it and one of the reasons I've been considering giving that thing away to one of you guys. So we'll talk about that in a later video, but my Nepenthes very well may be up for grabs here in the near future. Anyhow, I broke the first bud off again with the Nepenthes. I was looking at the plant one day after watering it, noticed a second bud that was pushing straight down from this section of the plant into the sphagnum moss below. So I did the best I could to free it but for whatever reason it just stayed too moist and it blasted. This orchid, if you get the buds wet and it's um, not growing season, summertime, warm temperatures, it's not going to be a very happy plant. So it will promptly abort its buds. So I gave up hope. I have been pushing this plant on, trying to get it to grow well. I gave it more light so I've got a new really strong growth coming. It's actually pushing up instead of down, which is great. This section of the plant has another new growth over here, so now I have two directions of growth, which is even more exciting. But the most exciting thing is, a few weeks ago, I found another bud on this plant. And thanks to that, and a lot, a lot, a lot of babying and care and nursing this thing along, we finally have our first bloom on Mormolica rufescens. I'm gonna roll a few picks and then I'm gonna have to adjust my camera angle and probably body position and get up under this plant to be able to show you. But from here, if you haven't already seen it, this is our bud. It does hang down. It is absolutely amazing. It's peach colored, it's got red spots. And I'm going to go ahead and roll a few pictures now while I get myself in a better position to video this thing for you guys and chat about it just a bit more.
So I hope you guys enjoyed that little um, flash of pictures. I decided against setting my camera up in a funny way and I definitely have to lay down on the floor to film this orchid because every place that I put it the light was playing too many tricks and I was not able to do the bloom any kind of justice at all so if you lay down on the floor and you look at it from below this is the Marmalica Refescence Bloom I am sure you guys have terrible feedback because I am all in this plant right now trying to film this so I apologize for any um, other camera noises but this is the only way to get this bloom in its true beauty so there we go um, Marmalica Refescence is in the Maxillaria tribe it's got this amazing bloom. It's got a um, slight vanilla scent to it. Not strong, it's kind of like um, you know your Maxillaria tenuifolia. You have to get close to it to smell it, but it does smell absolutely amazing. So I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but I am super strained in the position I'm in, so I'm gonna have to cut this video portion of this bloom short. But hopefully you guys get a good idea of it and know that this is an absolute must-have if you can find one and you can grow into intermediate to warm conditions all right my apologies guys i could not lay like that any longer i'm literally crammed down here in between my moss and this plant there's not a whole lot of room the bloom kind of faces that way so i'm just in a really awkward spot but this plant is special and this bloom is very very special so once again, that's Marmalica rufescens, that is a Maxillaria tribe orchid, and if you guys are unaware of the Marmalica genus, then please check them out. They have some really, really cool orchids, and um, if you guys can grow Maxillarias and Oncidium types, then you should be able to grow these as well, providing that, again, you can find them. Alrighty, on to the next. So. This is a plant that we looked at recently, but I do want to take a look at it again before we get too far in the season. I've already faded a few blooms off the first spike. This is the last little bloom remaining. And this spike down here is absolutely in its full glory right now. So this little guy, this is Dendrobium microbulbin. Really neat little Australian, um, Sri Lankan, Indian Ocean area dendrobium. I've been warned by Andy himself, which is where I got this from, that there is another species of dendrobium that goes around that goes under the name of microbulbin that's not actually microbulbin. And I am assured by him that this is dendrobium microbulbin. Um, this is the Sri Lankan version. I don't know um, what other people grow out there. I don't know a lot of people that have this. I haven't seen this a lot on social media or the internet period. So anyhow, this is a really neat little miniature. Again, it grows just like a lot of um, Aussie dens and it doesn't need a whole lot of light to be happy. So if you like miniatures and dendrobiums, then I would say this is a pretty much must have little dendrobium. So dendrobium microbulbin and um, yeah, the canes on this plant kind of look like pseudobulbs. It's more oncidium like than dendrobium until, of course, you get to these blooms. So, really neat little plant, guys. Especially if you like white and pink. We should see this again. It's, it's relatively long-lived. But we are going to go look at one more orchid and um, a couple more things before we get out of here. So here we have our Dracula Carteri that I said I was not going to be speaking about for a while. However, we have tons oops, we have tons of blooms on this thing and if I don't address it, I am doing it in complete injustice. So four blooms on right now. I'll roll a few pics of this because I do not want to get the camera close, guys. It's such a pain in the butt. They are kind of small and getting the correct focus on them and everything else you know what I'm lying look at that guy it just really wants to present itself so we will take a closer look alrighty so when I tell you these are one of the cutest and most awesome at the same time little Dracula blooms that I have now you see why um, 
Dracula Carteri, if you look, all that red inside that bloom, it's kind of fuzziness. So it's hard to see on film and focus and talk about it all at the same time, but definitely got a happy little face. Um, kind of a monkey face, I suppose. Beautiful little red markings on it on the upper and lower sections. It's variable, so every bloom is a bit different. You know, it's it's consistent with the one up top, but sometimes it has more here and more there. Um, but that little face, another Dracula that is just a stunner. And if you can't already tell, oh, geez, gotta save it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all easy, man. There's a real learning curve when you're filming your own orchids and talking and doing all this stuff so sorry guys <laughs> anyhow uh, what was I saying special plant um, <laughs> try to recover try to recover hopefully the blooms speak for themselves anyway a great Dracula um, it's doing really well for me oh, oh, oh it's doing really well for me so um, another one that definitely is somewhat favorable at least to intermediate conditions because it's definitely not cool in here right now so that's Dracula Carteri I've got it mounted with live moss and some zombie moss just like all my other ones and it is just blooming its little head off it's still got buds coming um, it's still got spikes that are extending and I just couldn't be more excited about this plant by far right now my best blooming Dracula not a bloom update, but what I will say real quick is right next to it we have our Dracula Chestertonii, and I don't know if you can tell, but all of that growth is new pretty much, and it just keeps getting bigger and better and better. The um, older growths are falling off. I've lost all the bigger, older leaves that were kind of getting nasty. They did not have a happy time in transit, some of them. So. We have lost those, but we do have new growth popping up all over the place on this plant. And I couldn't be more excited. Lynn, I really, really, really hope I join you in the Dracula Chestertonii Bloom Club this year. Um, I wanted to take a second and I wanted to show you all this moss on this mount. A lot of people say that it's really difficult to keep live moss and an orchid alive on a mount. Well, I would agree with most of them, with most orchids, but if you use sphagnum moss kind of sparingly, you know, mix it in with the traditional zombie moss to some degree, not too much, and add other sorts of live moss. This is my badge moss here that we look at every now and then, my forest moss mix. And I'm telling you what, man, this might be my new go-to. I really want to start propagating more of this stuff to give to you guys and to use on my own mounts because look at this moss mix. It's one of the most natural and beautiful things I have going on. And the orchids really seem to do well. I've got new growths coming all over the place on this thing. The roots are doing decently well as far as I can tell they're pushing down into the moss I can't really see them but I know it is producing roots so everything I have growing in this mix does well and that's part of the reason why I started this big moss project over here once this sphagnum moss gets a little bit more established which if you guys can't tell again diverting a little bit from the blooms if you guys can't tell it's starting to really happen in here this moss is doing really well. So, sooner than later, guys, I'm going to have this. I'm going to add more of this to it as time goes on. And I'm going to be able to try to hopefully provide you guys with some of this awesome moss mix. It's just so exciting. Anyhow, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I, um,. Again, I'm always trying to help out my fellow growers, and it really seems to be a good mix. It works really well on things that like to grow moist. So, the next bloom we have is actually not an orchid, but one of the penguiculas that Daryl had gifted me um, a little ways back. I do not 
I actually cannot see the tag to this thing. I might have dropped it somewhere, so forgive me. I'll have to find it later and put the name up on the screen. I posted this to my Instagram the other day because I caught a picture of this thing in the light and it was just absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to share it with you here as well. This is, uh, again, one of my Pingwicula hybrids from Daryl, and what an awesome little bloom that is. If you guys aren't into pings, not only do they do a phenomenal job of mopping up fungus gnats and other little bugs in your greenhouse, see here, they absolutely have spectacularly beautiful flowers. Here's another one while we're on the bloom topic. That's all purple or lavendery color with this green throat. Just gorgeous. So. Pinguiculas, um, as effective as they are and cool as they are to keep, they have really cool flowers as well. I am also excited to say this little one down here that Daryl gave me, um, it appears as though it might be trying to put a flower out here as well. So we may see more ping, more ping blooms than we even thought here in the near future, and that is extremely exciting. I absolutely love them. I've been growing a bunch of them for quite a while. Um, these here, the this one, and a few down there. Um, and so far, I have been unsuccessful at blooming them. I have moved these up to much higher light. They have an awesome color now to them. And um, yeah, I'm hoping I can get these, my own, to bloom soon. Um, in addition to the ones that Daryl has given me. So. Last thing we'll look at are a few more orchids, and yes, believe it or not, Miltonia phymaticala or Oncidium phymaticalum is still with us. This thing's been in bloom for darn near a month now. The blooms opened up kind of, uh, you know, relatively uniformly in the same week or so. However, some of them are fading faster than others. I think that has to do with my watering of other adjacent plants. I think that I have some overspray issues, perhaps. I know that, you know, these blooms up here, for instance, get a little bit more overspray from being tucked so close to this mount that they're propped up on. Um, I think that might be something to do with it. All the ones out here suspended and free hanging, they are doing really, really well. And all the ones down here are still in live, you know, still in play. They're tangled down in other orchids, but again, they stay much, much drier. So we're about, let's see, three weeks or so in on these blooms, believe it or not. And again, I really love this plant. Thank you to Terry and Yoshi again for joining me on the Care Collab for this. I am excited that um, I found a few other people to grow this weird little plant. The final plant that we have to look at today, because I know this is going much longer than I had anticipated, is our Sophronides Manticorea. Again, this is absolutely one of my favorite and most special blooms. The camera does not do this thing justice. I have to try to do this every time because I just feel like you guys deserve to see the true colors of this plant. That is about as close as I can get it on film. And again, it's so special. It's got that fire orange and yellow throat. And the petals and sepals are just ruby red. I mean, ruby red. You can see the striation, the um, you know sunburst fading kind of in the central area isn't that prevalent um, visually to the naked eye. It is much, much more red than that. So if you guys like red blooms, um, you guys love sulfur 90s as much as I do, you guys absolutely have to get this plant. I got this, I believe, from Andes. Yep, from Andes. And um, it is doing really, really well. I know that Andes has sulfur 90s um, on occasion. Tarzan has a lot of sulfur 90s. They love their miniatures, and it is a miniature. And what I'm very eager to see is whether or not that new growth produces a bud. I'm pretty much sure that the one behind it, the little wimpy one, is not going to do anything, but that one is really giving me hope. So we may have another flower yet this year, and we may extend the blooming from this plant, which would be super, super cool, because look how beautiful. Really neat. I'll give you a little side profile of it. 
thank you guys so much again for watching. I don't think I have a better plant to close this video out on than this. So we are going to do just that. If you love Software 90's Manticure as much as I do, please check out my Instagram. I will make sure I get this orchid up on there in the next few days and give you lots of good information about it. That's what I'm going to try to use most of my Instagram for. I may post more stuff as we go. Um, I may do some giveaways on there and things like that, but for now it's just going to be all about the blooms and trying to get more information to you guys about these plants because I really do love them and I would love to see more of you guys grow some of these plants. So as I mentioned before, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. I have had a lot of new subscribers lately, so welcome to each and every one of you guys new to my channel. I hope you guys continue to come back and enjoy my videos. And thank you guys, all of you, for being a part of this channel, especially the ones who've been here since the very beginning. I appreciate you guys, and I'm looking constantly for ways to give back to you. So big, big things to come, and um, I have some pretty big channel announcements to come here in the near future as well. So thanks for joining in with me again on this Bloom Tour. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again in the near future. Until next time, thanks for watching. Please stay safe, and happy growing. Rufescence is in the Maxillaria tribe, um, and this position really hurts my neck, so I am going to have to move. <laughs> oh dear. The things that we do for orchids, guys, goodness. Anyhow, so, back again. Uh -huh.